Oh, wait. Okay. I'm going to call the um, Finance and Operations Committee meeting to order. And our main order of business today is the discussion regarding the proposed Human Resources Ordinance modifications. I'll turn this over to County Manager. Well, um, what we have, and I'll ask uh, Kevin if you don't mind, circulate these around. I think that's the one I want to keep. Um, that you, you've gotten this information or received this information earlier. Uh, you may not it's have. Mally. Yeah. It's all right. I should have gave you both of them. That's okay. Um, what you have is the red line version of the changes. And in the time we spent uh, trying to get this passed, we have reached out to our labor attorney at Genlet 17 Bettis to review our entire ordinance and the proposed changes. You have a memo from him basically blessing those changes. He made some minor suggested edits, but um, I'm not even sure they need to be made at this time. But um, so I, I think, you know, we've talked about this in council. We've talked about it at FNO before and uh, happy to talk through it if you need me to or answer any questions you have. Uh, the two real changes of any substance are we wanted to change um, a provision that applied to our CDL drivers. Uh, basically, they have a certain amount of time to obtain their CDL. Um, however, there's no uh, consideration given to how long it might take them to get into the class. Mm -hmm. So if the classes are unavailable, then we have allowed them to stay on. We wanted to clean that up to say the county manager could extend that period of time in order for them to get into the class. So that was one thing. And the other thing is the alternative work arrangement primarily uh, concerns uh, working remotely. So we've got the section in included in there. Previously, there was a section that only addressed them doing that on a temporary basis. Um, and we're not looking to create something for a temporary basis, something that's either more of an intermittent basis or a uh, regular basis. All those are subject to change at any time. So I would not call it a permanent basis by any means, but a basis where that could be their regular work schedule for a defined period of time. That requires approval of an application that they would fill out, get signed by the department head and the county manager. So um, again, happy to elaborate any if, if you'd like or answer any questions. Yeah. Explain this tele working. Um, well, do you, you mean the actual section, the text, or just can you be more specific about your question? Yeah. What What is What is the safeguard? What do you mean by being able to work at home? Well, it's working I mean, rem remotely, and um, all anybody that would be eligible for this would have issued to them a laptop. In most cases, they have a cell phone uh, and are fully able to work remotely. I mean, th this was really became necessary during the COVID outbreak. And um, so once we um, had people adapt to that, understood that they had an ability to be able to work remotely, um, and there are a lot of advantages to the county and their employee for that. So they would log into their computer just like they're in their office. Then we have a VPN, which is a remote device that allows them to access their files. Um, it also allows us to monitor when they're on their computer. Um, they would, uh, they still have access to all their emails. And uh, typically I'll, I use the plan reviewer as the model that we think about uh, making this available to. They, uh, we have uh, plan reviewers in engineering. We have plan reviewers in um, planning, uh, quite a few of them. And they basically sit in the front of their computer all day long. Uh, and they review all the plans they review are digital. So they're on their monitor. We don't review any paper plans anymore. So in all their interactions, all their approvals are all done by computer. 
So it really, it literally makes no difference to whether they're sitting in the office or sitting somewhere else doing that work. They have access to all the same things. They do the same plan review. We uh, monitor how many plans they review in a month. We've tracked that for years with them. We still track it with them working remotely. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, an opportunity that we have that allows them to um, work remotely and that in some cases that's a recruitment tool for us. Uh, this was uh, something if, if we are trying to employ somebody that lives far away from the government center or the planning office, if they only have to drive into work three or four days of work a week versus driving five days a week, that's, that's something they uh, look at on favorably. That is something our competitors offer to them routinely, being able to work remotely. I mean, I think that's the, the way of the world these days. Anytime somebody interviews for a job, that's the question they ask. Am I going to be able to work for remotely at all? And some places are different than others. We would suggest that uh, typically a day or two a week is what we would be they would be eligible for you know other circumstances might come into play but that's typically what we would expect is we don't ha currently have anybody that works exclusively remotely we don't intend to do that uh, we expect the people uh, the employees would be in their office and more than likely three or four days a week every week um, a lot of this would be um, awarded on an intermittent basis. Let's say if you had some reason, maybe you broke an ankle or something and you couldn't come into work, but you could actually sit at your computer. Well, I'm all right with that. Yeah, but we, you, we would let you be productive and be home and work. In the case of a workers' comp claim, that might be a reasonable accommodation. That doctor may say, well, I can let you work if you can work from home, but I can't let you go into the office. That is very helpful to us to allow them to be to not be out on workers comp or not be out on sick but actually be in productive so there's a lot of a lot of reasons there it would be an advantage to the county it's also an advantage to the employee for the reasons i just mentioned so we think that's it's a good policy to have the policy as written requ again requires that you do a, uh, a an application and justify how you would be able to work from home why you should be able to work from home or work remotely and so we think we've got some some good criteria in place but you don't think in the long run it hurts work ethics i think they're supervised just like they're supervised when they're in the office i mean certainly anything's subject to be abused and we would have to be um, diligent to make sure that's not the case but um you know that's subject to happen in the office as well i mean I know you probably haven't worked in an office environment a whole lot, but most of us have. And uh, you can go down to the break room, the water cooler, or you know, wherever you down to your buddy's cubicle and spend you know half hour talking to them, just like you could do off remotely. So I mean, I, again, it comes down to supervising that employee and to make sure they're productive. But I mean, you <laughs> monitor how many hours they're putting on their computer. Yeah, in addition to having the VPN for their computer, most of our employees interact by sending an email, so you certainly would see how many emails they're sending or where they're sending them, when they're sending them, when they're on their county cell phone. They are connected in many different ways, even if they're working remotely. So I think we have a lot of ability to track how much they're working. And again, the plan reviewer example uh, may not apply to everybody, but we know how many plans they're approving and reviewing each month, just like we know how many they're doing last year and the year before that when they were not working remotely. So we can quantify a lot of the production just as if they were sitting in the office. Right. Well, I know when we went to 911, we were talking to that gentleman down there and he said no that would never work for us and i can understand it because i got three different stations set up fire ambulance and all and he said their split time reaction had needing to run right over there so if you got our general public coming in and a person needs to be there how's that situation going to be handled well we 
this very small percentage of our workforce that would be eligible to work remotely. And when I say very small, let's say small percentage, because most, you know, certainly you can't be a sheriff deputy and work remotely. You may be able to do your your reports remotely, and they all do their reports remotely. But uh, if you work on a water crew or a, a paving crew, you can't do that remotely. If you have a pay window, you can't do that remotely. But I think everybody understands what jobs are suitable for that when they come well, to work and what you want. You don't think it's going to cause any employee grief amongst certain ones, you know? Like saying, well, that's the elite one there. They can. You get well, what I I'm think, saying? I think that's the case with <coughs> most every benefit we deal with, whether it's your hourly wage, whether it's your, do I get to drive a county vehicle? Do I get to sit by the window? Do I have the bigger office? All those things come into play. We just treat them, try to treat everybody fairly, and we try to make the process uh, equitable so that we know there's a reason to, ju to justify why somebody would work remotely, and there's some benefit in, in in for the county for that well i just have a hard time swallowing it because you know where i come from but i mean it's it's just uh i don't know i miss the country i grew up in i guess you could say so <clears throat> tell me i don't interrupt you oh you you go no, ahead I, my mind's turning i'm thinking of something okay. else. um so 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 David, a um, couple of quick cool questions. A couple of quick cool questions. Um, so the the um, lawyer that reviewed this, the, what's in red here? So this has already been approved by the. Yeah, he re he reviewed the red line version. He re he reviewed the red line version. Of it. Okay. So a couple of things. Um, you know. I understand the working remote. Obviously, I work full time remote, so I get it. Um, the 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 where I have concerns, and, and we've talked about it a little bit, is is a how how are we identifying the work that's being completed? All right, and I know that you're looking at the number of um, contracts or whatever that have been reviewed, etc. The the challenge with reviewing the VPN, for example, I work out VPN, and I'm I'm logged into my VPN 24/7. So it's really not a measurement. I mean, you can log in your VPN and walk away, and it's you're, you're logged in. It's no big deal. No, when your computer goes, times out. I think it's 15 minutes, but times out. We've got a record of that. Oh, you do. Yes, you do track it. Okay, all right. Um, so one of the things that um, I, and the other well, one of the things I would suggest on this thing is that is how and what work is being accomplished. For example, what I do is at the end of the day, I will actually enter in the work I completed. So I do four hours of this, five hours of that, two hours of this. It takes me 10 minutes to do it every day. And, and it's done, and it's submitted, okay? Um, it's a very easy thing for somebody to do if they're working remotely, but it takes away the burden of having you have to go into the system and tracking it, and they can go and they can note basically at the end of the day what they've completed. All right, that would be my recommendation for this. All right, you can easily do it through a submission into a spreadsheet, all right, from a tracking purposes, and they could submit it to you if they happen to be working remotely either at the end of that day or at the end of the week. And that way you have a, a, a documented record based on what they've submitted. That would be my recommendation for tracking purposes. The other question I have, and I think you we've talked about a little bit, is is if you are managing people the on site, um, that they um, have an ability to have meetings uh, s still online via either a uh, conference call or some type of web interface, such as MS Teams. It, it doesn't have to be necessarily MS Teams but it can be something along those lines. So that way, if they are managing people, no meetings are canceled, and they can go ahead and have their meeting, still work remotely, and everything flows seamlessly, all right? Um, based on that, that would be my two requirements or recommendations for this. 
And okay. and that with the the majority of the ones that are going to be doing this, would they are they hourly or salary? I think most, if not all, would be salary. There may be an, a very few hour, hourly ones in there, but. Am I wrong about that? I, I don't think we any of the ones currently doing right now are hourly. Okay. Well, I'm right about that. Well, you're shaking your head. No, no, no. You, you are correct about that. But <laughs> I don't think. Yeah. You're correct. About I don't. If, if we, the vast majority, if not all of them, are hourly. I mean, I'm sorry. Salary. 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 Kevin messed me up on that. So. Yeah. But have you, have you basically drawn up a, sheet yet that they're going to have to follow discretionally? We've drawn up a, an application where they would justify why they should work remote, how they're going to serve the Joint this. We got that in the last meeting. That's, that's the work arrangements. That's the alternative work arrangements. Yeah, I didn't make you talk to that. Uh -oh. We got this in the last, in the last um, F F &O meeting. Which basically just says, well, I got it why? piled under all the other 30,000 papers I, I got. <laughs> I know. Me too. Is that part of the policy? What you're talking about? It is, not, it is not written into the policy. It is a separate document that's generated mm -hmm. uh, for that purpose. How often? This allows us to be a little more flexible with if any mm -hmm. change or whatever. How often would they submit the request to you, Dick? I guess for whatever period of time they would be requesting, you know, mm -hmm. certainly less than a, a year. I don't, I don't know, I don't remember if there's a. I think it's set up for, it's done annually, but it, it's submitted once and reviewed annually. I think is the way you had it written up. Yeah, so I mean, some people may, it's not gonna apply to everybody all the time. In other words, the example I use with the workers comp, that may be for a specified period of time. And that would be different from somebody else's specified period of time, but mm -hmm. no, no longer than anyone. Yeah. Well, I don't have no problem fat, pregnant, hurt, stuff like that. I mean, I just was always brought up and taught you need to get up, take your pajamas off, and get to work. I mean, that's, because I mean, me, we all know sitting in this room, nothing like this would have flew a few years back, but a lot of stuff now wouldn't have flew, would it? I mean, Plus you can drink a Bud Light, so, I mean. Well, I think people have been working remotely for decades, but maybe not around here, but I don't think that's, um, it, well, it is not I mean, a novel concept. Well, and I, and I think it's it's something that if it's structured right, it, you can actually get more more work accomplished because you're not traveling. You, you know, you put a lot of time, you can put even more, I put more hours in working from home that I did working in the office because I, I eliminated the travel time and I'm actually putting in 10 to 12 hours a day, you know, so it's, you can get a lot of work done from home. Kind of reminds you of becoming on county council, don't it? Yeah, it does remind End up you, putting it? more time in the disc than you do your actual job. Yeah. Yeah. I think the question is, do you trust the county management to, to effectively put this in place? I think that's where we are. I think we are trying to fix something that's not broken at this point. Well, I've got, like I said, I've got two requirements on this that, you know, if, if those requirements are put into it, then I'd be willing to support it. So, I mean, even the employees that are working in an office, in a closed office, a remote closed office, Diane Dill worked over in Fort Mill in a little closed office. There was nobody else in the building. It was just her for a couple of years while we were doing construction work on this building. And she didn't have to, at the end of the day, do a, like a, a sheet of everything that she had done that day. Everybody just knew that Diane Dill was doing her job. And I just think we are, I think we are, I think we are in a mode of micromanagement that is a well, very negative thing. It's not, it's, it, it's not managing, micromanaging when, when you're actually showing the value of your work. And that's where we found my job, for example, AT&T. The value of showing what you do on a daily basis was important for management because you can identify where there may be opportunities 
okay? Maybe they're spending too much time on one thing and not enough on the other. It's a management, it's an ability yeah. for management to, to, to But be, don't you think it should be at their discretion whether or not they do that, whether they put some, that in place? I mean, I think that's the same thing whether you're in the office or out of the office. I do too. Like, I've got six departments and I see most of them almost every day. Um, talk and email to them constantly throughout the day. And I'll say, I mean, Tommy, you've been on council how long now? Your fourth month? Oh, yeah. How much of your work has you done, have you done in the government center building? How much have I done? Your county council work. So you're working remotely. You have a different type of job now being on county council. And I get that that might be something. It's, it's not the middle days where the foreman's walking up to make sure the hands are moving. You know, I judge like my departments on productivity. What are they getting done? What are they not getting done? Customer complaints. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't. The assessor, he talks to me. You know, probably maybe every other day about questions. Is that like what's going on? I don't ask him to submit a report of what he's done at the end of each day. And you know, I, I think. Tom, to your point, I, I understand what you're talking about with some particular mm -hmm. jobs. I think that's important to have. But, you know, others like, you know, if you had to report to your constituents, which you did every day for county council, it's a, it's a list of stuff. At the end of the day, you can't remember everything you've done. Yeah, and I just well, don't think that fits for all the jobs. I don't, I don't think making that a blanket of, of every single job has to do that. But it's, a, I mean, an elected official <laughs> as opposed to somebody that, I mean, but I'm just trying to get from I'm doing a work standpoint, like the yeah. guy that's in the office four days and now the office one day, when he's in the office doing the same exact stuff that he does at home, does he submit the same report for the four days in the office? Because if there's value added for it when he's remotely, there'd be value added when he's in the office as well for the manager. Well, you story. would expect though, you're in the office, you know, you're gonna you're gonna see it because you are in the office with management. Well, well, no, they're not in the office. I mean, with like that's the I whole got point. a treasurer's office here in Rock Hill that you know I might see once a week over here. I talk to Tracy probably every day, you know, so you're, you're not there. She doesn't submit anything to me as what she's done every day. Right. I see the work she's doing with the questions she's asking and the stuff that's coming across my desk from her. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the department, I probably, you know, I got procurements on the third floor with this, HR's on the third floor, IT's on the fourth floor. Um, I make it up to IT probably the least just because then the third floor, I'm down mm -hmm. every morning I go through finance, treasures, and the assessor's office over there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't talk to every single employee every day. Yeah. You know, the payroll gal, I see what she's doing basically every two weeks. Right. You know, when I review those reports. And she can do that job at her desk or at her house. Mm -hmm. And COVID proves she can do it just as effectively. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think just the, the blanket nature of it, I trust Mr. Hudspeth. If it's a benefit to see what they're doing to fill out a report, I think I think he's the best one to understand that. But well, I just, let, let, let me just address your other issue i mean I, I think attendance of meetings would be required just just like they would mm -hmm. you know obviously they're not going to be there in person but we can remote them in we have those meetings all mm -hmm. the time sure. uh, with the employees report i mean after all <coughs> self-reporting so they're just going to write down on something or type up something about here's what i did today so if they're goofing off, they're not going to say, well, I goofed off for four hours today. You know, they're going to put something in there mm -hmm. saying they did something. And it does create, even if it's 10 or 15 minutes, you got six people working at home, that's 10 or 15 minutes times six people, and then a supervisor has to review that report. I, I, I don't know that there's a lot of uh, value in that, but, I mean, we could, we could we could track, again, how many plans they review or how much they're on the phone. And, mm -hmm. and maybe as an alternative, we we could periodically audit the work that they've done, you know, mm -hmm. say, hey, what'd you do Thursday? I want to see some, I want to see your emails. I want to see your plans you reviewed. I want to see that sort of thing rather than have them do a daily report. That's just kind How of- How many total thing. employees are there in the county? About 1,250. Over 1,200, 1,250. And how many are we talking about that would, are we talking about 20, 100, 200, I think that routinely, and I didn't bring those numbers with me. I had it a couple of weeks ago. 40 to 50, something like that. 40 to 50 that do it routinely. I would say there may be a situation that number could creep up to where yeah. some people aren't doing it that might be able to do it. The actual is under 40 right now, but I think when we looked at it in possibilities, it was somewhere between 40 and 50 in total. But how do y'all feel that the taxpayers out there are going to say, well, now we done spent millions of dollars 
on buildings and if everybody ain't in the building we could have got a utility shed and stuck some junk in y'all could well that's still uh i don't know what the percentage is but that's far fewer than five percent of the people working i mean if anything it may free up an office but it's really not to that extent because they're still going to need that office three or four days a week and the efficiency of those employees working from home probably i listen if i work at home i get so i do so much more if i can go in there and not Lord, always, if I do, I, I have to get away from Wednesdays the shop. I have to go on a service call to get something done. I was closed on Wednesdays for a year and a half so I could go in on Wednesday and just work. Because I have so many people stuff. coming into the shop extracting me that I have to leave. I mean, I think there is something to be said for efficiency when you're, when you're just, uh, when you don't have other distractions. I know I work remotely in between meetings. I have a lot of meetings in Rock Hill, a lot of meetings in York and in between I'll have a home base at my house or early in the morning and if I'm there for a couple hours I don't have Kevin coming into my office all the time or I don't have the distractions and I can it's a different type of work I mean it's it's catching up on emails catching up on phone calls, <coughs> viewing reports but it's much more efficient to do that in that setting for me than in the setting where I get interrupted and I'm sure everybody else was the same way I think it's a mix some, you know, that's what we're offering is some in the office, some away. And again, we're not proposing that anybody would, you know, the parking lot you showed me there, Tommy. One car. Any, anything like that. We're not having a situation where we lose an employee and hadn't seen him, you know, for months on end. We're not talking about that. We're talking about uh, one or two days a week for the most part and, um, you know, approved on a regular basis. So, we'll see. go ahead. No, you good, Tom. So, you know, David, I, I, I trust in, in your leadership. I, I, I trust, and I'm not trying to take away from your leadership. Um, I'm, a, I'm coming across from my experience in what we do from, from our management perspective and how we've utilized, and again, it doesn't, there's, there's value in, in having somebody actually say this is what i accomplished during the day i mean in and, and as much and it can be very quick it can be very you know it may seem okay i can put whatever i want but there is value in people when they work remotely to say this is what i accomplished so you know if if look i i'm let me let me interrupt mm -hmm. you for a second yeah i'm going to say we'll do that because all it's mm -hmm. going to take is an email from the person working from home mm -hmm. to their supervisor. And if it's the plan review, it would be, hey, Jonathan, just let you know, I work from nine to six today instead of eight to five, but I still got all this work done, just an email. Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal. I mm -hmm. think we can yeah. okay. I just worry about them right. sitting there and they're watching Jerry Springer over here trying to do the work and they sitting uh, there doing this and then they, and you know, our state, because we're not under any York County ordinances on as far as our dairy is concerned. That's all through the state and DHEC. And our inspectors have to go all the way back to Columbia and get their state trucks and then come out. Because I know me and you was talking, seriously. Uh, the further away you get the people, the worse the government is. The what? The further you get away from the people, the worse the government is. Well, well there's a lot of things worse right I now. I don't good at these things, even dumber. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just oh, showed absolutely. him some pictures what absolutely. Congress and Senate's been having trouble with because they can't get the government workers to come back to work. And they, they're they suffering now. Um, I mean, I got some videos. Mm -hmm. of, I mean, I, I spent time. It, but I don't know. Everybody keeps saying I, I need to change, but it's just hard to grasp. Oh, you keep grinning, but I'm keep oh, I telling you. I get told the same thing all the time, Tommy. Yeah, no, it's, you keep saying you can't stop progress, and I'm okay. telling you we're degressing. I said growth, not progress. Growth, and you saw that the other night, didn't you? Yeah. You can't, you, nothing y'all can do to stop the growth. That's what I was saying. It will be coming. I think it's fixing to stop itself. Well, no, it's yeah. not. But not progress. You're misquoting me. It's not. Uh, we're um, ways out. So you we're know, I, I think I think this is uh, I think this has been a good discussion. 
Yeah, we can add that to the form or somewhere else. You know, mm -hmm. You'll be required to submit a daily uh, log. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. the level of detail depends on the employee. All right, but, exactly. But it's exactly. going to be a very simple five, ten minute thing like you mentioned. Yeah. And uh, that, that way it's documented for. Exactly. Are you talking about just the work from home aspect of this, or are you talking about this whole thing? We are so honed in on that work from home thing. I mean, it's gotten beyond silly. It has gotten beyond silly at this point. How did it say, It just, we, look how many times we've met and discussed it. And but our work ethics in this country is going so to So you don't shit. trust the employees that, you don't oh, trust that I, they're working? I, it ain't got nothing to do with trusting. I know that people will waste time. Everybody, everywhere. This is a waste of time for me today. I, I could have been, been working on drugs. Can you ask them, the labor lawyers, if they feel good enough, for, can help make sure that we're not stepping into some kind of, it's very discretionary, but there's something we can do in order to protect ourselves from arbitrary and capricious claims, and is there anything else that we can do to make sure that we built in objective criteria? What is a capricious claim? Like, you have to give me an example. What's an example of one? That you just, it's going to be basically up to date that he's the one that's going to get um, charged with how did you decide who's, who can, who can benefit from that work from home. And if it's a female who fits the same criteria, maybe she doesn't. I mean, I think those are the questions that, that I would simply ask that the labor lawyers be asked. Very simple. Yeah, I mean, I assume that was something he took into consideration as you reviewed it, but we can ask that specifically. And we tried to address that with the form that has to be completed with the justification. Not every plan reviewer might be allowed to do that for a variety of reasons, but, you know, that we would have to justify why one would be allowed and one would not be allowed. I'm going to call for the vote. Well I, well, I guess I am looking at this, but I mean, I'm looking at the letter, and I thought that what we said was that there was a comprehensive review of There was. Call for the vote. saying he's not. Pardon me? You want to make a motion? Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, I got to go ahead. Go ahead. Did y'all read the letter from the lawyer? I thought there was two of these. Mm -hmm. it's all I'm not trying to drag this out. I'm just saying, ask, can we not mm -hmm. ask these questions? Did you read this letter? I did read the letter. And I think, well, and go, I, well, you guys, I mean, you, you've got the discussion going on here, so I'm not.
Christy, to your point, I've misunderstood. He has not done the entire employee manual. He's done the entire chain ordinance that um, suggests of suggested changes. Is that correct? No, he reviewed. We sent him the red line ordinance to review, and then you asked him for him to review the entire ordinance. We sent the entire ordinance, and he sent back two email responses. And then yes, we put the summation of both of those in the memo form that he sent this over. So All right. Here's what I'm going to say to this, and I, am, I support this. This is why I think this is so frustrating. I support the revision of the policy, but when I read this, I mentioned, even on the second page, I mentioned by telephone that I've drafted full telework policies for other clients that go into greater detail and would be happy to send the policy for review for possible addition. Why aren't we doing that? I don't have a problem with doing this. Our labor lawyer's telling us that he's got more detailed policies to suggest to us to make sure that we get it right. Seems like we ought to take his advice and do it. Nobody is questioning you guys. I think we need to follow our labor lawyer's advice here. As to ordinance, the ordinance that we're debating tonight, I stated that I have reviewed the alternate work arrangement policy and believe it to be fine as written, period. But he goes on to say, hey, Yeah, he's I got, he's done this alternate work policy to other attorneys. 2017. Let's get it right. That's all I'm saying. Let's get it right. This doesn't need to be a difficult. Were these other changes incorporated into the proposal? Those were changes outside of the or changes we were already making the ordinance. That was from when he reviewed the entire H ordinance. He would love to rack up tens of thousands of available hours if we went to have him rewrite our entire H ordinance. He's offered to do that and he will. He made those changes. He's done the work remote policy for other clients and he's got a standard template he's got, but he's also said ours is just fine. We'll spend as much money as y'all want on the it's labor attorney. It's not about money, it's about getting it right. And we haven't had a comprehensive review. He's not said it's wrong. Since 2017, and I think we should do it the right way. And nobody is questioning any of it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just say that I, I confused Kevin saying that he had re reviewed the entire ordinance to mean that he had reviewed the entire manual. That is not the case. I think just reviewing it in context. Which is the ordinance, right? No, the handbook is not the ordinance. It's adopted by ordinance, is it not? But we can talk about it. So I just want to be clear the handbook has not been reviewed. The entire HR ordinance that's proposed has been reviewed, correct? Are we talking about reviewing the whole handbook now? Is that what you're talking about, the handbook? This is part, I think they need to be reviewed in context. If they've not been reviewed since 2017, when, when I read this letter, I see the lawyer saying, hey. I can make more money if, I, if you'll no, let me do this for money. you. It's about, this you, is critical piece. Do you want to call him? We made him available for phone. Would you like to call him? Well, first of all, I'd say the handbook should be reviewed periodically, and I don't mind committing to that. I don't know that, um, I really thought that's what, I, I guess I misunderstood quest, uh, Kevin's response to that. But um, that needs to be done periodically. So we can do that. We can also adopt a more detailed policy on work, working remotely and other HR policies. However, that's not part of the ordinance as he says in here. The ordinance, itself is fine and um, so I guess it just depends on how much detail you want to provide in the form of um, additional well, policy. I guess my point is that I'm hearing some council members express some concern about this making sure it's objective enough. Who? The, who? Well I mean I've, I've heard several say I've, I'm hearing Mr. Atkins say it. I've heard Mr. Aldet say that he's struggling with some of how do you measure the, the productivity and a, a, how do we make sure it's right? Not that we don't, we support our management, but let's get the policy right. 
Mr. Huckabee has suggested that there are some questions. How do we make sure What were his questions? Because he didn't present them to me, and I'm holding the meeting. Making sure that there are protocols in place to make sure that the productivity is met. So I think we've discussed that. We've discussed that now in two, two meetings. I think we have, if we haven't reviewed this in context, then the lawyer will kind of, I read this differently. Well, let's call him, Kevin. I, I, what what have brought this up? CDL drives. Fred Williams. Fred, this is Allison Love, York County Council. We are in a um, finance and operations committee meeting, and um, our chair has joined this meeting, and I think she's got a couple questions for you. Okay, I'd be happy to answer any questions I can. Okay. Hey, Fred. Um, Hello. Can you, can you hear me? I'm sitting a little bit further away. I can scoot closer if I need to. No, I can hear you fine. Thank you. Okay. So um, I was looking at the letter that you sent over, and I think one of the, I'll just, I'll just limit it to me. One of the concerns that I just want to make sure we do is that we currently have um, a policy, and I think one of the questions was, have we had a comprehensive, or when's the last time that we had a comprehensive review? Because the policy in front of you, I think, is part of the manual, the policy manual, not the entire policy manual. Yeah, I think that we, our firm has not done a comprehensive review of the county's policies, to my knowledge, at any time. We do typically recommend that a kind of a comprehensive review of the, I would say the handbook, the, the policies, all of those things is something that should happen at least every couple of years. I'm, I'm for example, not to you know, waive any kind of confidentiality, I'm reviewing a handbook right now where it had not been updated since 2008 and it had the really outdated language about the uh, Family and Medical Leave Act. I mean, it had a number of problems that were caused predominantly by the fact that it had not been reviewed in so long. And so I do think that a, a, a comprehensive review of all of yeah. the HR Can you policies hold on? Is, just is hold on. A, hold on. Just, yeah. Let me interrupt you for just a minute. Can we make a motion on executive session? So we're getting legal advice. I don't want, let's just go ahead and quick. Okay. Motion for executive session. We have a motion for executive session. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, oh, for the receipt of legal advice. Oh, for the receipt of legal advice. Okay. So we have a, a um, motion and a second to go into executive session for the receipt of legal advice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. aye.